Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Nitch, representing Loquio LTR in Puerto Rico. Um, my colleague, Jess Zimmerman, is also online with us today. Um, it's really nice to be here and interact with all of you, and I've been enjoying the talks thus far. Today, I'm going to share with you briefly about the work that we're, we're doing related to hurricanes and drought and, and the effects on tropical forest biodiversity and biogeochemistry. I'll start by sharing some site news. Um, on the administrative end of things, we've integrated new people into our management committee uh, really as one mechanism of expanding diversity and, and inclusivity and creating a bridge to new leadership. Uh, those new members include Tana Wood, Maria Oriarte, Alonso Ramirez, and myself. Uh, I've worked with Loquillo for many years in different capacities, and in January, I'll be starting as a professor at the University of Puerto Rico. Uh, we've also engaged several new collaborators, including ecophysiologists, uh, which aligns with our goals for expanding the scientific lenses and the tools that we use at our site. As with others, we've recently been giving a lot of attention uh, to the development of demographic and climate assessments uh, so we can better understand the diversity and inequalities within our scientific community. And then of course, take appropriate steps to improve where necessary. We're close to finishing up the demographic survey which should be distributed uh, by the end of this calendar year. And then we'll follow up with a climate survey in 2022. So our collaborators have been awarded several grants and I'll, I'll mention just a few highlights here. Uh, we've got one focused on drought two on hurricanes, including a PI involved in the HERS Research Coordination Network that many of you are probably familiar with. Uh, we also have a big grant focused on scientific outreach efforts with local schools and the practice of analysis and interpretation via the data jam model. Uh, and then one other piece of news is that for 2022, we're finishing up an Ecosphere special issue on the second phase of our experimental hurricane project. These grants really underscore the focus of our LTR site, which is a, a rural tropical montane forest uh, situated within the urbanizing social ecological context uh, of the island of Puerto Rico. And much of our work looks at vulnerability to extreme events. Uh, so together with our collaborators, we employ a diversity of monitoring and uh, experimental approaches, uh, trying to understand how large scale drivers of global climate change manifest locally via proximate drivers, such as cyclonic storms, drought, and Saharan dust, as well as the historical land use legacies, ultimately leading um, to understand how they lead to altered system dynamics. Next, please. So I'll take a couple of quick deep dives to put that in context for you. Uh, looking at proximate drivers of ecosystem change, uh, what we're finding is that things are getting drier as predicted by models. And part of what's driving that is Saharan dust. And the timing of the, driving, of the drying is really important too, as it's anticipated to coincide with a season that's typically punctuated by greater rainfall. We've got more work to do to understand how landscape scale change associated with hurricanes interact with the dust to influence precipitation. These changes in precipitation could be important uh, for our historically ever wet forest and hydraulically vulnerable species. Interestingly, when we look in detail at drought resistance, we find that vulnerability is poorly associated with life history strategies such as, as, such as successional groupings. Uh, and how this plays out will be the subject of a through-fall exclusion experiment that we're in the process of designing. We've also observed that the larger trees are more vulnerable to major hurricanes like Maria in 2017. And our models show that under a more severe drought and storm regime, these forests will shift from carbon sinks to sources, further accelerating climate change. Uh, we've been tracking the response of faunal communities as well. In our mountain streams, post-hurricane changes in light and nutrient availability cause a short-term shift from leaf to algal supported systems, which influences all trophic levels, uh, for example, shrimp and small invertebrate communities. Uh, and then the data on the screen here are from replicate stream tributaries that will soon be the subject of a flow reduction experiment. Upslope and away from the streams, our long-term experiment examination of terrestrial snails indicates that they're, they're really quite resilient to the effects of hurricanes and drought, uh, effectively adjusting to the changes blown in the wind, so to speak. Of course, the soil environment is crucial to these dynamics. And, and what we found from our long-term hurricane experiment is that the debris pulse from hurricanes results in the migration of carbon down through the soil profile over 10 years with greatest gains in the mineral fraction. And modeling is also showing that the anticipated increases in frequency of major storms will promote an overall shift towards a net loss of ecosystem carbon storage. Finally, I'll leave you with a taste of where we're headed in the near future. Uh, I've alluded to a couple of upcoming experiments looking at drought effects in different habitats. There's the Stream Free Project, uh, which is coming online in 2022 uh, to effectively simulate drought conditions and examine what happens to organic matter inputs in the aquatic community response. And right now we're in the planning stage and applying for permits for a through fall exclusion project that will follow the protocols of the International Drought Experiment. And we're looking to build something like what Hubbard Brook has installed. So with that, I'd like to say thank you to our local collaborators and to all of you as well for your time and attention.